Hello, and welcome to the MR Ultrasound Fusion Guided Prostate Biopsy course. This session is our introduction and outline to the course. My name is Dr. Art Rastenhead, and I will be guiding you through the educational activities to follow. Before we begin, we always have some disclaimers. This course is for educational purposes only. It allows our physicians to review the material after attending one of our hands-on courses. It is not to be used to direct patient care or a substitute for actual hands-on training. A little background. With help from the AUA and sponsorship and support from Dr. Gopal Badlani, the first MR ultrasound fusion biopsy course was hosted at the AUA in May of 2014. Dr. Pinto and myself were the course directors, and we included urologists, radiologists, and radiology technologists in the course. It was a huge success. Continuing on, in December 2014, we had our first standalone MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy course here at Mount Sinai. Our second course at Mount Sinai was hosted in March of 2015. We were very excited to have physicians from all over the world attend our course. A little bit about myself. I'm the first dual fellowship trained interventional radiologist and neurologic oncologist. I've been performing research on MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy for approximately eight years. I'm an associate professor at Mount Sinai in the departments of radiology and neurology. And I do have a creative research agreement with Philips, the developer of their Euronav device. The learning objectives for our course will go over the limitations of the standard ultrasound and guided biopsy approach, review basics of MR imaging, and go into what is actual image fusion. We'll be covering the Euronav device with an introduction to how the device works, workflow, and some tips and tricks to develop and increase your hands-on experience. We will be also reviewing the advantages of a targeted biopsy specifically in patient populations that include men with prior negative prostate biopsies, men on active surveillance hoping to confirm that they actually have low-grade, low-volume disease, and even some of the possible options and advantages in patients with, who are biopsy naive. Taking and putting this together, we'll give you the tips on setting up an imaging program, which allows new ways to stratify a patient's risk of having clinically significant disease, and the implications for focal therapy. As we're able to now target and biopsy areas, there are new technologies that have been developed to allow us to treat specific areas within the prostate while sparing men most of the complications associated with whole gland therapy. We'll go into greater detail later in our talks. Our goal again is to introduce this technology, explain the applications for use, give you tips and tricks how to integrate this into your urologic practice, give you the basic understanding of MR imaging for you to review the films with your patient, allow you to segment and target a prostate for the procedure. And overall, the, one of the most important things that we try to teach and explain to our students is that this technology requires a team approach. You cannot do this alone. It's important to have direct collaborations with your radiologist, your pathologist, and you, the urologist, while implementing this new technology. One of the most common tests used to screen for prostate cancer is the PSA. There's approximately 20 million done per year in the United States for various reasons. This results in approximately 1 million men annually undergoing a prostate biopsy. Did you know that only 30 to 40% of these biopsies are actually positive for cancer? That means the majority are negative. Almost 70% of these men had a negative biopsy. It doesn't mean that they don't have prostate cancer. It just means that prostate cancer was not detected. Hopefully within this course, we'll give you options and ways to approach and deal with these clinically difficult patients. Looking at the evolution of the prostate biopsy, since it was first described by Dr. Ferguson in the 1930s as a transperineal approach, and then described by Astraldi in 1937 as a digitally guided transrectal approach, which was done for decades afterwards. It wasn't until the ultrasound probe was able to be merged with an ultrasound biopsy guide and a spring-loaded needle they were able to perform ultrasound guided biopsies. And this was reported on in the 1980s. Initially started with a sexton scheme, then several authors published on the advantage of the 12 to 14 core extended scheme, which we still do today. Also used are transperineal mapping biopsies, which have been done to screen men for focal therapy to allow sampling every five millimeters in a grid-like fashion around the prostate. 
Most recently, what we're here to discuss today in the course is multiparametric MRI. How are they done? Well, initially, people did MRI in gantry guided biopsies. While this is incredibly time consuming and uses up the MRI gantry time where you could be scanning other patients. Well, several research and companies have developed MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy platforms. This allows us to use the information from the MRI and combine it with the ultrasound of the urologist's office to perform a targeted biopsy. Well, multiparametric MRI can also be used in patients after ablations or radiation therapy with possible PSA recurrences and or confirming adequate therapy. We can also use the MRI to plan for focal therapy, which is still investigational. However, it has shown some promise. Other technologies used to evaluate the prostate for target biopsy is also elastography, looks at tissue strain while performing an ultrasound guided biopsy. Did you know that using a 12 core biopsy with an 18 gauge needle, it only samples 0.4% of the prostate? And prostate cancer is still the only solid organ malignancy routinely detected by indirect tissue sampling. And what I mean is, is that there's no specific targeting done. We sample specific regions. During the ultrasound, we do look for suspicious area. However, ultrasound sensitivity and specificity is very limited when trying to detect and target prostate cancer. Historically, prostate cancer consisted of three groups. Screening men for prostate cancer with elevated PSAs. They undergo a biopsy, and then they're diagnosed with prostate cancer. Well, with integrating imaging into the paradigm, men still can undergo PSA-based screening, if they have an elevated PSA, an MRI can be used as an intermediary step prior to biopsy to hopefully select men at a higher risk of having prostate cancer. It has been found that 38 to 54 percent of men with an elevated PSA can have a negative MRI, which decreases the risk of actually having clinically significant prostate cancer. While this approach may improve or increase the detection of clinically significant disease, it still has not been shown to have a long-term or lasting impact on prostate cancer-specific survival and or quality of life. This information still has to be obtained with future studies. I'd like to say welcome to the MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy course, and we're going to get started now. Please, if you like, tweet about the course on MR fusion hashtag or my hashtag at Dr. Art Rastin hat. Thank you so much, and I hope you stay tuned to this YouTube channel for additional videos to come.